What's up guys? Good morning, Dar Sizzle and Pudding coming at you this morning. We are a fishing couple here in South Florida and this is the video number three of our Florida Keys adventure series down here in the beautiful Lower Keys, particularly right here in Big Pine Key. And today we are gonna be using the fish angler app to our advantage and heading out into the back country, way, which is basically the Gulf side, not the ocean side, and getting way up back in there uh, to a couple different areas that are supposed to be really great fishing spots. And we haven't been there in a couple years. So we're gonna kind of navigate ourselves into there and uh, hopefully catch a lot of fish. All right, Dar Sizzle, let's some trials and tribulations. We made it. Got stuck a bunch of times trying to navigate in uh, the back country is just a little nerve wracking. But we have made it. We're here. Look at all the bait. <laughs> oh my goodness. This is just one of our favorite spots in the Keys. Friend Kevin showed it to us. I'm um, slowed down so I can put it all the way down. Yeah. Down the Gulf side. Uh, just pretty much straight. Beautiful. Uh, north of Big Pine. We made it. And, uh, made yeah, it. And, you know, in the Keys, if you're going to backcountry, you have to expect to run aground. So just be ready. And you know, I don't know what kind of gauge you have in your boat. I only have like one of those, like two gauges. One of them has like a ton of different modes. And so you're going to put that mode on water temperature. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if you usually keep it on volts or RPMs, but you're going to put it on water temperature. And when your engine starts overheating, that's when you turn it off and put on your trolling motor. <laughs> yeah. Good advice. Yes. Sorry. All right. Getting a bite here. Just letting this fish run with his bait because I just had two bites back to back and let it run and then never hook the fish. So I'm just making sure this fish eats my bait. There it goes. Circle hook. And it pulled again. All right, so that's telling me that I'm getting some bites, but my bait might be a little bit on the big side. And the chump is starting to go out here. We're starting to see some kudos behind us. So it's only a matter of time before we actually hook up. But you can see right here that this fish just circled back. You see how my circle hook is like turned around in the bait. So the fish did that, and that's why he never got hooked. And you can see he's all tore up. So something definitely try to eat him. Well, let's get a freshie and see what happens. Feel them. I have my finger on this braid. Oh, running with it now. I'm gonna let him eat it. Just gotta figure out what the fish want sometimes. Do they eat it right away or are they gonna swim with it and eat it? Tight. Nice. Reel them up. There's the case of kudos. Really? You? That's funny. What do you got? It's a snapper. I think that's a schoolmaster. Really? Yeah. Let's see. Slightly different. Looks kind of like a mangrove with the uh, lines here on the eyes. Hey. But with the yellow tails, that's not a mangrove, obviously. And look at this growth. Put them horizontal so we can see them. So pretty. Yeah, let me get the hook out. There he is. And check out that weird looking growth. See, it's sticking straight out. Yeah. Ew. But cool fish. First fish of the day. I think that's a schoolmaster. I could be wrong. Not a dog snapper, but a schoolmaster. All right, guys. So we're going to cut the hook here and let this fish go. But I will be posting a fishing report of this area on the Fish Angler app. Let's just throw them back in. So that way, you guys can come out here and do this too. And I'll post the series of what we caught here. And hopefully, obviously, the fishing is just beginning, but there's a lot of big sharks here, big barracudas, wide variety of snapper. You basically catch everything you want right in this one spot. Really cool, and that's why Fish Angler is so amazing, because all of us get to share the information together and help all of us catch more fish, whether you're a very beginner fisherman or angler to an expert. You know, Fish Angler is for all of us. So you guys gotta make sure you follow me on there. Whoa. Trying to get rigged up after I cut that hook out. And sure enough, our dead bait rod just goes off. Oh, I hope he's over the anchor. Going forward, follow your fish. Going out to the flat. All right, so hooked up on another fish just like that. 
have all these lines out and this current in the chum is really just starting to move, attracting fish over to our boat right around this point here, content. Ooh, I don't know what it is. Big stingray, holy cow. Keeping himself on the bottom, that's what it is. Fighting a huge stingray. And it's just got uh, color of him. That's why he's staying down deep. And when he ran out into the flat like that, you know, I wasn't sure what it was because I didn't see a dorsal fin. A shark would have. He's keeping himself straight down. All right, I'm gonna try and handle this darn stingray. This is always fun. Bring him in. Brian wants to bring him on the boat. Well, I want to try and get his hook out if I can. Okay, You're not gonna use a net. The net? Well, you think you can lift him? I, I think put I your should use the net. Put your fingers in it behind his eyes right there. No. Put them on the boat. <laughs> he ain't gonna fit in there. So huge. He fits. Woo! Look at that monster. <sighs> wow, we. <laughs> this thing is massive. Yeah. Holy cow. <laughs> All right. All right. Woohoo! We did it. We did it. All right. Good job. He lives. <laughs> He's fine. Totally fine. What do you think about that? He's right there. Yep. Swimming away. Yeah. Nice. Nice job, Dustin. Not really the target species, but it's fun to catch different stuff out here. And, uh, That's the biggest thing we've caught in a long time. Yeah, biggest one in a long time. Didn't really want to handle them too much because we wanted to release them. Yeah, we got those spines in the back. You know, Steve Irwin experienced. So, nice job, Dark Sizzle. I want to touch base on that fish angle wrap again, real quick. I don't, I don't want to harp on it too much, but you know, uh, Darcy always posts her catches on there. But it also has. I just started. I know we've been sponsored by them for like two years, but I literally just started playing with it more, and I have this. Uh, they have like layers, right? And you press this little button up on top, which is a standard layer icon or whatever. And you know, then you can filter by catches, uh, photos of catches, all this kind of stuff. But importantly, like for navigating and weather, is you can find, the, you can just turn on the buoys that are in your area and you can look at the buoys. So really this morning, what we did is, you know, we looked at the app and, you know, also we could find regular weather. So we saw that the wind was gonna be dying down today. Yes, finally. Yeah, finally, right, Sizzle? And, We're finally uh, able to make it to the spot. And I was easily in one location able to see like the buoys, you know, the NOA, you know, the NOAA buoys for what the tide's going to be coming up here to, to the, uh, you know, the golf side of Big Pine. And we we're able to see that the tide was going to be rising. So when you're in the flats, you know, it's super important that, you know, you pay attention to those tides, depending on what boat you have, of course. And so we want to come in here when the tide's going up. And then when it starts coming down a little bit, you know, we want to scoot out of here because it's the flats and we're not that familiar. So, you know, we drive around the highest tides and then we, you know, and then we get a little more familiar, and then we can go on lower tide. <laughs> but the app, was, it was just really helpful because all your information is in one spot. And of course, you can also, we also looked at the, uh, what Darcy loves is the, what, the moon phases. Mm -hmm. And that's a layer on there too, so uh, super helpful all in one place. You just gotta learn how to navigate it, which, you know, anyone yeah. can learn in two minutes. Right, instead of having like five different apps, you literally have it all in one app. Yeah, and I know they also, you know, they're also into the, you know, I know we do salt water, but they do a lot of freshwater stuff too. They're at the Bassmaster, you know, this weekend and stuff. So, you know, anyway, check it out, it's free. You, you can't lose. Literally. Woo! Might be a cuda. What is it? Whoa! What the heck is that? Whoa! What did I just hook? Oh my god! <laughs> That's it! A shark just came up and tried to eat my keeper mutton! Four pounds! Whoa! Sick! I didn't see any fish back here. Just casted it out quite a distance because of course, you know, when you have your chum out, the fish come back here and eat the, your chum and it's usually the smaller fish that are closer to the boat because they're dumber. And of course, the bigger the snapper, the smarter they are so they stay further back. But look at that. In the back country, we just landed a keeper, mutton snapper. Just like you guys know back home, I love catching these guys. Always nice to see them show up in the Florida Keys as well. And that was a really fun fight on light tackle. 
I mean, sorry, really nice to see a keeper mutton back in the back country. Uh, but again, we're gonna post exactly where we caught this beautiful fish on the Fish Angler app. Heck yeah, that is so cool. We'll double check, but he's probably like 19. Yeah. That's sick, that's our first mutton at this spot. Yeah. Wow, beaut. Circle hook right in the corner, just wasn't going anywhere. The shark literally came up to you at the last second. And Susan, what are you using? Your same bridge setup from last night? Yes, exactly. Tiny little 4 aught circle hook here, as well as a 20 pound fluorocarbon leader. And you can see I've got two split shots on there as well. But that's what it takes to get these bites. These fish are very smart, especially in the back country that we have a lot of clear water. I can see the bottom. So these fish can see exactly, you know, that line and stuff. So 20 pounds seems to do the trick lately. And we're catching them. Beautiful. I'll double check, but I'm sure he's good. Yeah. Nice. We only have a couple more hours of this tide uh, before we gotta leave because then the tide's gonna fall and we don't wanna get stuck out here in the back country. But this is our favorite part of the Florida Keys so far. Mine too, but Brian mentioned it the other night and I totally agree with them. It's just really exciting to see all this beautiful ice in here because uh, at the house we're staying at, they have like an unlimited supply of a fish or ice machine which hopefully one day I need to invest in. Um, but for now, it's a very expensive machine, so I'm not gonna do that. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and bleed him because we're gonna have a delicious dinner tonight. Clean and cook this bad boy. 21 inches long, they gotta be 18, so that's a really nice backcountry mutton. I like to bleed them while they're alive. You can just rip the gill plates with your knife right here. I actually have like a gut hook on this, this uh, Smith knife, which is awesome. And just rip it like so. And then you can also cut them right here too. Um, but the gut hook works well. You know, I just cut that gill plate right there and then same exact thing, just get it up in there. Hold Show on. Show how you can cut it too. Hold on to his eyes. Yeah, and then right here, you wanna cut right here. Like right, basically cut the throat. You see he's already bleeding out. You don't need to go all the way through, but I did. All right, so he's gonna bleed out. That's gonna be a nice, delicious mutton snapper filet. And on the ice he goes. We'll bury him in a second, let him cool down. Let him bleed out. Let's get some more fish. Nice start. Hooked up again. This feels like a shark. Can Should be a it. shark, it's a dead bait. Yeah, I can feel it head shaking like a shark. Is it All right, we're gonna land this one foot quick. Now he's a little bigger. Ow! You okay? <laughs> yes. Got the hook back. Yeah, the hook popped. Perfect. Hook popped out and hit me in the hand. And then hit, bounced, and off went, my, Ow! Bounced, off, bounced off my knuckle and hit me in the head. Boys are so... Dumb. Have, everything is so painful. Ow! <laughs> Ow, it hurt me! <laughs> like last night when, oh, in the last video, the mangrove bit his stomach. <laughs> that, that. He like screams, Ow! So everyone can hear him. Men need sympathy. And he doesn't have a mark on his belly. How would you know? Because I looked yesterday. <laughs> when he bit you know, you. men act like babies because women don't give us any attention and we need we need coddling. You don't understand. It's not that hard. It's not, not that easy to be tough as we are all the time. And we need a little love. Men are and, puppy dogs. And so we try and get a little compassion and empathy and no. No. Men are puppy dogs. Comment below, fellas. My knuckle hurts a little bit. Put more sunscreen on your hands. I don't know. Do you want to do a different area? Or? Yeah, we could probably move. Sound like we got those two snappers and then the, the rays and nurses got so thick that like yeah. they're not, can't get it to those other fish besides right. the rays and nurses. And uh, these fish that were behind here are not here anymore. They haven't been here. Yeah. So it's like something happened. I think the current's actually slowing down now. It's almost noon. It looks like we still have the current, but you know, the wanna... thing with the keys is, you know, the current, the thing in the keys and just like it's getting starting to be in Jupiter and Stewart, you can put out chum to attract fish, and then you get some good fish, but then the sharks come and eat yeah. all your fish. You know, Honestly, so we really just got lucky with that keeper mutton snapper, and then kind of, you know, we got stuff you'd call trash crap fish, but, you know, at the same time, we're having fun following our dreams, so. Yeah, and this is, you know, we, we had to have a lot of memories in this particular location, because, you know, it's one of the first times we've been way back here. Our friend Kevin Raleigh from Tighten Up Charters took us back here. 
Yes. And then we took that. Then we took the, uh, Darcy's dad back here before he passed. Yes. It's really just one of our favorite spots. Connor. And Connor. It just. I mean, it's a little breezy right now. Um, but I mean, it's still beautiful. I mean, and then we always catch fish here too. Yeah, can't complain. Like we did today. Do you want to get closer to the mangrove edge there and look, and or you just want to leave? We can go over there too. I think it's gonna be more of the same. All right, guys, we are back at the fish camp, and it's time to fillet up the beautiful mutton snapper that I caught, which was just a crazy catch. I love catching muttons, but also just goes to show you that these deep sea fish that are supposed to be in the ocean are also back in the back country and on the flats. And our buddy Kevin catches redfish and snook, cobia out back. I don't know about how much triple tail are out there, but again, just shows you that these fish are both places, back country and offshore. Just getting my knife nice and sharp here. Filleted a bunch of fish the other day. You guys watched that mangrove video. Hopefully you did. You had a great time that trip. Uh, but here we go. We're gonna fillet this mutton. Not a bad sized mutton. It's actually perfect for the two of us to eat. Put it in an eye, put it behind the camera. So really, no complaints. And then we're gonna use his carcass for hopefully some dead bait for some tarpon or chum or whatever. So just sticking it right in, make the cut, and always angle it. I always like to say this over and over, but you wanna angle it up to the head. So that way you get as much head meat as possible. So just make that cut all the way in. And we bled this fish too, if you remember. So we got that cut right there. So we'll see how the meat looks, but the meat looks no ma great no matter what, whether there is, whether you bled the fish or you didn't bleed the fish. And lately these days, I've been bleeding most of my fish. It's just been a thing I've been doing. And I haven't, I don't really know about a huge difference other than the taste goes, but I do see a difference in the meat as far as like, you know, less blood in the, in less of a bloodline in the fish when they're bled. All right, just, just angling that knife in there. We're gonna get every ounce of meat off this bad boy. And I think Brian the put in is gonna cook it on the, the uh, outdoor grill. And hopefully you guys will be able to see some of these key deer because Big Pine is known for the key deer in this area. And um, they only live on this key. And they're like little dogs. They don't get very big. They're really cool. Some of the bucks have uh, antlers, I guess you would call it, or racks, right, racks? Uh, and then I've heard too lately there's little baby deer around and I have not seen them yet, but it would be really cool if they showed up. They usually come when you're cooking outside. So you might see the little, we call them little dogs because they come up begging for food. All right, so there we go. Beautiful mutton filet. Let's go ahead and skin it. And like I said earlier, I'm not going to skin it. We're going to do it on a half shell. Oh yeah. <laughs> I was about to go do this. Oh my goodness. Sorry. Should I just take the bloodline out? Yeah, take the uh, bones. Or the bones. Yeah. Another way you can do this is just, actually, I don't know if this is gonna work, how this is gonna work too great, but I'm gonna give it a go. Outline the bones, even though we can just eat around those, and then angle my knife underneath. There we go. Yes. Perfect. You get a little bit of that belly meat right there. You see that little skin? Just slab that off real quick. But um, not to say it over and over, but make sure you follow me on the Fish Angler app for a lot of great tips and tricks there that I don't share anywhere else. Just type in the search function, Darf Sizzle, and you'll see all my good information there. I'll also reply to you, so any questions, ask away. All right, there he is. Let's knock out the other side real quick, and then I'll meet you guys right over here for the barbecue. Thanks so much for uh, slabbing off those fillets, Darf Sizzle, and keeping the skin on on the half shell. Welcome, guys, to another edition of Cook it with pudding outside Big Pine Barbecue Edition. Sizzle, where's my fish? Looks like I'm arriving at the same exact time. Fresh fish, anybody? <laughs> Delivery? Wow, what a coincidence that was, Perfect. everybody. Perfect. Weird. <laughs> All right, so going with our theme, ladies and gentlemen, of cooking simple when you're on vacation, because of course you could be in a location that you don't know anything about. You could be at a vacation house, on a trailer, or camping, in a motel, you don't know. So we got a barbecue here, and we're gonna keep it super Simple. Let me get started here real quick. All right. Oh, it's hot. I got it warmed up already because I'm, I'm learning something. And so we're going to have a traditional barbecue. I got corn. So I, all I did was wrap it up in tin foil and uh, just butter and salt and pepper in there. This is hot. You know it's hot and when it's 90 degrees in the Florida Keys and you got your uh, steaming barbecue in front of you. So we're going to put these on here. I'm not exactly sure how long those take. And I cooked the fish, or I, as, as you saw, we had Darcy just do on the half shell, and you can cook any number of fish like this, okay? You could, particularly redfish, anything with a heavy uh, scales on it, right? Like uh, striped bass, maybe, for you northerners. 
and redfish is another well-known one. So I got the fish on here. I'm gonna do salt and pepper. We're keeping it simple, right? Everybody has salt and pepper. Very simple. All right, then we're gonna coat it with some butter. I melted some butter. Look at this. Ooh, it's gonna probably start a fire. That's okay. The barbecue. That's gonna go down. Don't worry, everybody. So we're just gonna get that over on it. Right. All right. Now you always gotta have an acid. It's fine, it's fine, don't worry, it's got those hard scales. We're gonna use tomatoes today. You can also use lemon. Put those right on top. Right on top. Look at this. Awesome. Those are gonna be delicious once they're cooked. And, and we're all set. Can you guys see that? I'm gonna get the camera down a little closer. Look at this. Look at this. Nice, right? The fire went down, don't worry. And we're all set. All right, I got it on medium heat. I'm gonna leave this in here, I don't know, five or 10 minutes, because we know fish cooks at 10 minutes an inch, okay? I think it's done. That's what done looks like. All right, I'm just gonna put these on a tray, and we'll meet you at the table. Let's we'll see what Darcy says. I'm having a little trouble. Again, you know, when you're on your own, you're roughing it. You don't have all the utensils you're used to. So, you know, sometimes things are gonna look a little messy. Oh well. You know, that's how we roll over here, we're cooking with pudding. And then one thing I like to do is, is, is scrub the grill after, after this. It makes, it just, you're gonna get all that stuff off. Just give it a quick thing with a wire brush. Don't forget to turn off the gas. I love you doing this the whole time. Hey, Dark Sizzle. Time. It's super hot and it's flies. The flies are like attacking us, it's crazy. And sure enough, the second I say that, like, I want to film the key for you guys, they're literally not here. Like, <laughs> the last, I don't know, week we've been here, every night they show up at this hour, whether I have food or don't have food, and they're not here tonight. It's just so weird, so I apologize. But maybe Brian will throw in some B-roll. Yeah, we got plenty so. of B-roll. And I literally uh, one, like, bonked him, like, on his knee the other night, like, begging I, for food. I know you piners are feeding these beasts, and so because every time we come here, they get closer and closer, right up on top of you. Yeah. Like, right next to you. It's almost scary. They'll stand within two feet of you. No. Closer. Six inches. Yeah, they take, they don't care about your personal space. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I also got a little B-roll of this wonderful place we're staying at. It's just so so uh, keys-ish, I guess. It's like a fish camp. It's awesome. And uh, of course, you can see it more in all the other videos in this series. You should definitely check those out. But how? Would, of course, ahead. the fish is amazing. We should do more barbecued fish more often. But sauteed is just as good. But I feel like when you barbecue it, it just kind of, like brings out different flavors of the fish. Oh. I don't know. It's interesting. Like more. The smoky More flavor. smoky, and you can put. And then you get like the oils seeping out of the fish. I don't know, it's good. Uh, you know, simple and good and. Yeah, you know, we honestly at home have a really crappy barbecue. And uh, this is a really nice one here actually. So maybe we just need to get into the barbecue. And that would probably make it more fun for me and easier. Again, if Somebody you want to sponsor with the barbecue, let us know. <laughs> yes, please feel free. <laughs> but um, yeah, so this is an amazing meal, delicious. We're gonna like scarf this super fast because again, it frees the flies all yeah. around here. Uh, but we just want to give a special thank you to Fish Angler App for sponsoring this video. Um, they've been great supporters of ours now for two years. Yeah, so, so love them. Again, check them out, please. Um, and yeah, if you have any more questions, drop them down below. Anything else we talked about in the video will be down below as well. Um, so yeah, thank you so much for watching. We hope, we, we hope you enjoyed. Is the corn done? I have not tried it yet. I'm trying to eat the fish. Mm -hmm. Corn's good. Ooh, yummy. All right. I can't wait to eat the corn too. <laughs> Perfect, simple, delicious meal. And now we're ready, all ready to go fishing bright and early tomorrow morning. Yes. Yeah. So thank you guys so much for watching this episode. We hope you enjoyed. I'm going to sit here and stuff my mouth, but I can't talking. So we're going to just wrap it up. <laughs> <laughs> but until our next awesome adventure, follow your dream. And, and keep, keep on, on catching. catching. My beer's not open. You're a terrible, That's you're a terrible lame. keys person. That's lame. That's so unkeys of you. I know. What kind of piner are you? Come on, flies. Jeez.